Welcome to our virtual yoga studio. We're gonna wait several more minutes to allow people to sign on. And please take this moment to unfold your yoga mat or your exercise mat or a towel or a rug, whatever it is that you're practicing on. We are very much in the age of adaptation and making it work. And for today, it's going to be helpful if you have access to one or two yoga blocks and a great substitute if you don't have these um, are thick hardcover books. And then if you have a strap, a belt or rope, there'll be a moment when that could be useful, but it's not um, necessary at all. Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started. Thank you everybody for your presence. Um, and for making this a priority for yourselves today. Shabbat Shalom. I'm happy 2021. I hope that the first couple days are already off to an uplifting start. My name is Zach Lasker. I have the honor of being both the executive director of the Open Temple and also our resident yoga instructor. And uh, this is a, a pretty special yoga space in that we are going to flow through a yoga sequence. We're gonna come into a number of poses and really move our bodies. And we are really gonna bring in the wisdom and tradition of yoga as a philosophy, as a pathway to life, and see how that intersects with some of our Jewish wisdom. A really important disclaimer that I always like to present at the start of a practice you need to be the master, the guide of your own practice and be pretty attentive to the threshold between some heat and discomfort and challenge that you might encounter in some of the poses, which is healthy. It's a good way to work the body, mind and soul. And then there's the zone of pain. That is the zone you wanna avoid. So if there's any poses that I suggest um, that have you cross over that threshold, immediately back off, come into a previous pose. You can take a rest. You can come into child's pose, which is a position um, that we'll enter in together soon and early into our practice. So please, please be mindful of that. Um, and then finally, I've said it a couple of times, if you just logged in, in addition to your mat, it will be helpful if you have access to a couple of blocks or thick hardcover books. And if you don't, totally cool as well. I'll make sure to offer modifications. With all of that said, let's get started. Please take a seat on your yoga mat. Start with your knees bent and your feet firmly planted on the floor. Feet should be about hips distance apart. Extend your arms out in front of you, palms face in towards each other. And then we're going to slowly lower down onto our backs, releasing one vertebra at a time. Lower your arms down alongside your torsos, torso, fingers point towards the front of the room. And then walk your feet in a couple of inches. And then let your knees fall open to either side of the room and press the soles of your feet together so your legs are in a diamond shape. And this pose is called Supta Baddha Konasana. It's a bound-legged reclining pose. And inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Take a deep inhale through your nose and push the breath out through your mouth. Draw energy in through your nose with an inhale and take an audible exhale out your mouth. and continue that slow and steady cycle of breath at a pace that makes sense for you. And 
Now place one hand on your belly and one hand on your chest. So that as you breathe, you feel the sensation of the rise and fall of your chest. Your chest rises as you inhale and bring oxygen, air into your body. And as you exhale and let it out, your chest falls back into your body, sinking towards the ground. One of the foundational tenets of yoga in Sanskrit is called Vairaga, which is non-attachment. Taking this opportunity to let go of judgment preconceived notions, and certainly letting go of all of the commitments and responsibilities that will be right there waiting for you when you get off the mat. One of the consequences of these attachments is that they prevent us from truly being curious and being curious in the moment. So imagine you can wipe the slate clean And whether you are practicing yoga for just the first or maybe second or third time, or whether you're a veteran practitioner, here we are in this moment together, experiencing these poses for the first time today in this moment. And allow yourself to be curious about the sensations in your body, your frame of mind, and most importantly, your ability to breathe in and breathe out. Let's take another few cycles of breath together. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. One more time like this, inhale. And exhale. And if your eyes were closed, let them open. Draw your knees back together. Plant your feet again firmly onto the ground. And now inhale, draw your right knee into your chest. And then stack your right ankle on top of your left knee. Walk your left foot in closer to your tush. Extend your arms, your right arm through your legs, your left arm around your left thigh. And draw your left thigh in towards your chest. Interlace your fingers around the back of your left thigh. This is called thread the needle. As you inhale, draw the left thigh in closer to your chest. And with each exhale, push out through your right elbow into your right thigh towards the front of the room. We're starting to open up our hips couple more cycles of breath. Inhale, draw that left thigh in closer to your chest. And exhale, pushing out through your right elbow into your right thigh. 
One more inhale. And with your exhale, release the interlace of your fingers, lower your left foot back down towards the ground and take your right ankle off your left knee, put your right foot on the floor, pause for a moment. Just explore that sensation in your right hip, which we just started to open up. And second side, inhale, draw your left knee into your chest. Stack your left ankle on top of your right knee. Reach your arms out. Your left hand goes between your legs. Your right hand is right outside of your right thigh. Interlace your fingers around your right thigh. Draw your right thigh in towards your chest. And inhale, hug your right thigh closer to your chest. And with your exhale, using your left elbow, push your left thigh away from your body towards the front of the room. Two more cycles of breath, inhale, and exhale. And again, inhale, and exhale, release the interlace of your fingers around your right thigh, right foot comes back on the ground, take your left ankle off your right knee, left foot goes down and hug both knees into your chest and just sway from right to left and left to right, massaging your lower back, releasing your spine. And then next time your knees are towards the right, roll over onto the right side of your torso and press your palms into the ground to push yourself up into a seated position. And we're gonna to return to this bound legged pose. So press the soles of your feet together, grab onto your feet, open the soles of your feet up towards the ceiling like you're opening up a book. And then inhale, reach your arms up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, lower your right hand down to the ground in back of you. Inhale, lengthen through the left side of your torso, which lifts your left arm up into the air, and then lower your left hand onto your right knee and twist over towards the right. And inhale, and exhale. Inhale, lifting up through the crown of your head, and exhale, rotating your left ribs over to the right side of the room. One more inhale, reaching up through all four sides of your torso. And with your exhale, release your hands, come back to the center. And then inhale, arms come up towards the ceiling. And exhale, twist over to the left. Let your left hand fall down in back of you. Press your left palm into the floor, fingertips face towards the back of the room. Inhale to lengthen through the right side of your torso, which lifts your right arm into the air. And then as you exhale, lower your right hand onto your left knee and twist over to the left. Inhale, reaching up through the crown of your head. Exhale, really drawing your right ribs over to the left. Inhale, grow longer through all four sides of your torso. Exhale, open up your back shoulder towards the back of the room. One more inhale. And exhale, release. Hands come in front of you. And now again, return your hands to your, the soles of your feet. Open up your feet like you're opening up a book. And inhale, reach up from through your chest. And exhale, start to lower your torso towards your feet. Pause when you're halfway and inhale and exhale. And those of you who are particularly flexible in this pose, place your forearms onto the ground and lower your torso closer to your feet. And it's totally cool if you're still in the previous alignment. 
We're gonna be here for several cycles of breath. And through our practice today, we are exploring the idea of curiosity. Practicing Vairaga, letting go of our attachments so that we can ask questions of ourselves. Where's my mind? Where's my breath? How am I experiencing this sensation in my hips? Is this too intense? Should I back off? Is the intensity not enough? Do I want to move forward? Take another inhale. And exhale, start to walk your hands back in towards your ankles, lift your torso up. And then take one of your blocks or your hardcover book if you're practicing with one and prop yourself up on it. This is a good way to protect your lower back. Come into Sukhasana. Stack your right shin in front of your left shin. Hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. Lengthen up through your torso and let your eyes close. So yoga is this wonderful opportunity to explore our curiosity. And there is a parallel idea in Judaism called Hitlamdut. Hitlamdut comes from the root word lamad, to learn. And what I really appreciate about this word is that the conjugation of it makes it a reflexive verb and really personal. And so the meaning transforms. It's not just learning. It's not just taking data in and kind of storing it in the you know, power drive and the memory of our mind. It's, it's learning for the sake of transformation, of personal transformation. It's learning for the sake of growth, becoming a better person. And I think that's exactly where we come full circle to the purpose of a yoga practice. And simply stated, Jigar Gore says that yoga is not about touching your toes. It is what you learn on the way down. So as we practice non-attachment, I want us to release ourselves from these images, these ideas of coming into the pose as the goal. If that's the goal, there are several other workouts that might be better suited for you. And replace that with the goal of curiosity, of learning. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. And set an intention. What is it that you need to release, let go of, detach from as we flow through this practice? Inhale through your nose. And exhale, let your eyes open, release your hands. Come into a tabletop position. So your hands are rooted into the mat, shoulders stacked directly above your wrists, and hands are shoulder width apart. Point your index finger up towards the top of the mat and fan out your fingers. Your knees are stacked directly underneath your hips. Your back is neutral. And now inhale for cow, reach your heart and chest forward, 
arch your back, lift your tush up into the air, and exhale into calf position. Draw your belly into your chest. Inhale back to cow, arch your back. Exhale into cat, round your back. And with your cycle of breath, inhale takes you into cow and exhale takes you into cat. You're gonna take several cycles of breath to do that at your pace. And then after your next cat, come back to a neutral tabletop position. And then start to rotate your torso clockwise, moving your hips towards the back of the room, moving your torso to the side and then forward, making these wide circles. It's just loosening up your body. And then reverse the rotation, go counterclockwise. Again, making really wide circles. And then come back to that neutral tabletop position. Bring your big toes to touch, widen your knees apart towards the edges of the mat, wider than you typically would for child's pose. And if your knees are particularly sensitive, I recommend having a pillow or a blanket or maybe doubling over your mat to provide extra cushioning. And then shift your hips back towards your heels and start to walk your hands forward and lower your torso towards the ground. Lower your forearms onto the ground and then lower your forehead to the ground. This is Balasana, child's pose. And for those of you who are beginners, this is a phenomenal pose to come back to if you ever need a break. And in this pose, we're also opening up our hips, which physically is going to be the theme for our practice today. And breathe, inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. And I wanna to return to this idea of curiosity. There's a great, very short story from our Jewish tradition that the rabbi of Sadgora once said to his students, we can learn something from everyone. We need not only learn from other people and from God we can learn also from the creations of humans. So one of his students said, well, what can we learn from a train? And the rabbi said, we can learn from a train that because of one second, a person can miss everything. And from the telegraph, his student said, that every word is counted and charged. And from the telephone, they asked, and the rabbi said that what we say here is heard there. And there is this wonderful lesson that we can explore our spirituality, the other people in our lives, our neighbors, strangers, even inanimate objects with curiosity for the purpose of hiplang dut, of taking it in, absorbing and growing. Start to walk your hands forward, straighten your arms. Your forearms are gonna lift off the ground. Shift your torso forward, passing briefly through tabletop. Tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back and come into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. And inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. And as you take your next inhale, rotate your inner thighs towards the back of the room and exhale. 
And now inhale, lift your right leg up and back. Imagine you could stamp your foot on the wall in back of you and press back through your left heel towards the floor and take another inhale and exhale, return your right foot to the ground. Inhale, reach your left leg up and back, square your hips, stamp your left foot on the wall in back of you. Take another inhale and then exhale, lower your left foot to the ground. Start to walk your hands back towards your feet. Find yourself in a forward fold. Have a slight bend in your knees. Lower the crown of your head down towards the ground. And then grab onto opposite elbows. And inhale. And exhale. Those of you that want to intensify the stretch in your hamstring, start to straighten your legs. Release your forearms and cross them the opposite way. So grab onto your elbows again, but your forearms are stacked differently. And one more inhale. And exhale, release your elbows. Take both hands, grab onto your right ankle, shift your torso a little bit to the right. Imagine that you're draping your torso over your right leg and inhale and exhale. One more inhale. Exhale, release your hands from your right ankle, shift your torso over, clasp your hands around your left ankle and inhale and exhale. Take another inhale and exhale. Left hand on left ankle, right hand on right ankle. Center your hips. One more inhale. And exhale, hands float up to your hips. And then as you inhale, start to lift your torso up. Keep your gaze down on the ground. Lift up one vertebra at a time. And when you're standing up straight, lift your gaze up towards the front of the room and walk forward to the top of your mat. Standing in Tadasana in mountain pose. Today, let's stand with our feet hip width apart as opposed to together. Root down through your feet, lift up through your kneecaps, Lengthen through your torso, spread your collarbones, draw your shoulder blades together and soften your stomach. Arms are alongside your torso, palms facing towards the front of the room. Inhale, lift up through the crown of your head. Imagine that there's a hook on top of your head and a little wire is lifting it up towards the ceiling. So starting from Tadasana, starting from this mountain pose, we're going to do a few half sun salutations. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up, flatten your back. Hands can be on the ground, your ankles or your shins. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up and exhale, arms down. So that sequence is called a half sun salutation. We're gonna do it two more times. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down. One more time. Inhale, arms float up. Uttita Hastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold forward. Inhale into Ardha Uttanasana. 
coming halfway up, flatten your back. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, root into your feet, Uttita Hastasana, rise up, arms come up. And exhale, arms down, return to Tadasana. Great job. Moving on. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. You're going to bend your knees, flatten your palms into the ground. Inhale, step your right leg back. Lower your right knee onto the ground. This is a good time to pad your knee if it's sensitive. Untuck your toes. And then inhale, lengthen up through your torso. Arms rise up to the ceiling. You're in a low lunge. Center your hips towards the front of the room. In fact, lower your arms onto your hips. And let's do this together. So from this pose, a lot of us have a tendency to kind of open up towards the right. I want you to take your hands on your hips and rotate your hips towards the front of the room. Square your hips off. Keep rooted into your left foot. And then inhale, lift your arms back up, come into Anjane Asana, this low lunge. Going to be here for a couple cycles of breath, working on your right hip. Inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. Lower your arms again, hands on your hips. So remember what I said towards the start of the practice, that the goal of yoga and our curiosity is not the goal of touching your toes or getting into a certain pose. It's the journey. So for some of us, lifting our arms up, that's too much. And it distracts from this hip opener. So you can stay with your hands on your hips. Just remember that. So let's take another cycle of breath, whichever version of the pose that you're in. And then everyone, exhale, lower your hands to the ground, frame your front foot, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up into the air, Step your left leg back into plank position. You can modify this by having your knees on the ground. And then either take the vinyasa or shift your hips up and back into downward facing dog. If you're taking the vinyasa, what you're going to do is shift your torso forward, bend your elbows and lower halfway down. You'll inhale, untuck your toes and push yourself into upward facing dog. And then your exhale and tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. At any point in time, returning to child's pose. And now you're gonna inhale, reach your right leg up and back. Exhale, step your right foot forward between your hands, lower onto your left knee, untuck your left toes, inhale, rise up. So starting with your arms up, but you can immediately modify by lowering your arms onto your, your hands onto your hips. Center your hips, square them off towards the front of the room. Inhale, lifting up through your torso. And then exhale, deepening the stretch by bending deeper into your right knee. Let's take another couple cycles of breath. Being the master of your practice. One more inhale. Exhale, hands come down. They frame your right foot. Tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, and then step your left foot towards the front of the mat. Find yourself in Uttanasana in forward fold. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down, back into Tadasana. We're gonna do it again. Inhale, arms up with a different variation. 
Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up, flatten your back. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees. This time, inhale, step your left leg back. Lower your left knee onto the ground. Untuck your left toes. And inhale, reach your torso up, arms up. You can modify by having your hands on your hips. And then exhale, lower your hands down, grab onto your blocks or books if you have them. And then you're gonna inhale to straighten your front leg, come onto your right heel. Hands root into the blocks. This is a preparatory pose for Hanumanasana, which is like the splits. Squaring your hips towards the front of the room again. Inhale and exhale. And again, inhale and exhale. Take your blocks or books, set them off to the side. Bend back into your right knee, flatten your right foot on the ground. Press your palms into the ground, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, and then step your right leg back to meet your left leg and either take the vinyasa or go back to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, inhale, reach your right leg up and back. Step your right leg forward. Step your left leg to meet it. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. And this time you're gonna step your left leg back, your right leg back, excuse me, lower onto your right knee, untuck your right toes, take your blocks or books, press your palms into them, inhale, lift your torso and lift your arms up for a moment. Exhale, lower your hands onto your blocks or books. Inhale to straighten your left leg, come onto your left heel. Lift your torso up, square your hips towards the front of the room, and inhale, and exhale. And inhale, and exhale. Take one more inhale, and as you exhale, Push the blocks off to the side, bend your left knee, flatten your left foot on the ground, place your hands around your left foot, flatten your hands into the ground, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, and then step your right foot forward to meet your left knee, left foot, your back into a forward fold, inhale, come halfway up, exhale, forward fold, Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms down. Pause for a moment in Tadasana. Return to this idea of curiosity and heat lam dut, learning for the sake of transformation. And I've had the pleasure of speaking to several of you by phone since we can't connect live and in person. And what I wanna reflect back to you is that some, some folks have said that they really enjoy this practice and that it's challenging them because due to limitations or age or whatever the condition of your body is, you're not able to do all the physical movements that you might wanna do. So how today can you practice this idea of Vairaga? non-attachment, letting go, returning to a point of curiosity. If you can't do a pose in a certain way, what can you do? What are you learning? Can you focus on the breath? Can you do it part way? So starting again in Tadasana, gonna do another low lunge variation. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. 
Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back. Lower your right knee onto the ground. Untuck your right toes. And again, inhale, come up into this low lunge. Exhale, lower your hands, frame your front foot. And so for some of you, just being in this low lunge, this is more than enough to open up your hips and stretch your body. Others, you're going to inhale and lift your right shin up into the air. You're gonna lift your right arm up, grab onto your right ankle, and pull your right heel in towards your chest. Adding on this quad stretch to your hip stretch. Inhale, and exhale, and again, inhale, and exhale, one more inhale, and exhale, lower your right shin, frame your front foot, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, step your left leg back into plank pose, and either take the vinyasa or return immediately to downward facing dog. Inhale, reach your left leg up and back. Exhale to step your left foot forward. Step your right foot to meet it. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, lower down. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, this time step your left leg back, lower onto your left knee, untuck your left toes. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up, come into this low lunge. And then exhale, lower your hands, frame your front foot. If you're adding on, inhale, lift your left shin up, lift your left arm up, rotate it around, grab onto your left ankle. Pull your left heel in towards your tush and take a few cycles of breath. Inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. One more inhale. Exhale, release your left hand, slowly lower your left shin back towards the ground, frame your right foot, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, inhale to step your left foot forward to meet your right foot, find yourself back into a forward fold, inhale, come halfway up, exhale, folding forward, inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up, and exhale, arms down. Come into the center of your mat, start with your feet together. Step your feet now about four feet apart. Angle your toes in, your heels out. Start with your hands on your hips. Draw your elbows back towards each other and inhale to lift your heart and chest up. And then exhale, start to hinge at your hips folding forward, lower your torso towards the ground, pause when you're halfway down. And now the inclination could be to have the weight of your body towards the front of your feet. I want you to center your body, the weight of your body into your feet, into the middle part of your feet. And then inhale, Exhale, release your hands from your hips. Fingers come onto the floor. If your fingers don't reach the floor, no problem. Widen your stance. That's a good way to bring the floor to your fingers. Or another modification is to put your hands on your blocks or on your book. So wherever you are, inhale and exhale, and then start to move your hands back in towards your body so that your fingers are aligned with your big toes. So either your hands are pressing into your block 
or your book, or maybe they're pressing directly into the mat or the floor. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. One more time like that. And exhale, return your hands to your hips. Inhale, lift your torso up. And exhale, step your feet together. And pause for a moment. And I want you to consider what is the purpose? What is the nature of your curiosity? In Judaism, there's this wonderful notion that each one of us, it's a very powerful image, has two voices in our heads, the Yetzer Hatov and the Yetzer Hara. The Yetzer Hatov is our good inclination. It's the voices of encouragement, of empowerment, of righteousness, of compassion, of empathy. And the Yetzer Hara is that negative inclination. It's the voice in our head that sometimes speaks out of greed or disrespect or cynicism. Which voice is guiding your curiosity? As you show up onto a yoga mat, are you guided because you want to look a certain way? Or have you arrived today with skepticism about your own abilities? Or have you arrived because you're trying to cultivate your breath and see how far you can go and just be observant of the sensations in your body? Let's do the same pose again. Step your feet about four feet apart, hands on top of your hips. Inhale, lift your torso up. Exhale, hinging at your hips, lower your torso halfway. And this time a slight variation. You're gonna take your second and third finger, make a hook out of them, grab onto your big toes, and inhale, extend your spine forward. And then exhale, start to lower the crown of your head towards the ground. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. One more inhale. Exhale, release your second and third fingers from your toes, hands on your hips, elbows coming towards each other, and inhale to lift your torso back up. And exhale, step your feet together. Vrikshasana, tree pose, another great hip opener. Start with your feet about hip width apart. Shift the weight of your body into your right foot. Inhale, bend your left knee, pull your left knee into your chest, interlace your hands around your left knee, and pause. And then with your next inhale, rotate your left knee out towards the left side of the room, grab onto your left ankle, and place your left foot into your right thigh, and press your right thigh back into your left foot, make a vacuum seal and press the palms of your hands together in the center of your chest. And already for some, this is extraordinarily difficult because now we've introduced balance. So let me offer you two modifications. Modification number one is to press the sole of your foot into your shin. Don't press it into your knee, never press your foot into a joint. And a third modification is simply to press your left toes into the ground and rest your left heel on top of your right ankle. And now everyone release your hands onto your hips, center your hips. That's what's really gonna make this a good hip opener. So whichever version of the pose you're in, make sure to center your hips. And then Start to lift your arms up towards the ceiling, growing like a tree. With your hips centered, that's when 
you start to reach your left knee over further to the left side of the room. One more inhale and exhale, lower your arms, left knee into your chest, left foot down onto the ground. Second side, shift the weight of your body this time into your left foot, lift your right knee into your chest, interlace your fingers around your right knee, pause, take your right hand onto your right knee. I hope I didn't confuse everybody. Draw your right knee over to the right side of the room. Reach down, grab onto your right ankle. Press your right foot into your left thigh and your left thigh back into your right foot to make that vacuum seal. If you're taking one of the modifications, totally cool. You're the master of your practice. And then inhale, lift your arms up with your hips centered, open your right knee further out to the right and inhale and exhale. One more inhale and exhale, lower your hands down, right knee comes back into the center, right foot comes down. Excellent job. We're gonna move on and take a more advanced version of tree pose with a deeper hip opener. You have options. Option number one, repeat tree pose. Option number two, follow along for the more advanced version. So again, hands on your hips, shift the weight of your body into your left foot. This time, right knee comes into your chest. And this time, instead of pressing your right foot into your left thigh, I want you to stack your right ankle on top of your left knee and open up your right knee towards the right side of the room. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. Inhale, lengthen up through your torso and then exhale, bend into your left knee. Start to sit your tush down. You're making a figure four with your legs and you can either stop here, you can lower your torso down further and hook your left elbow into your right foot. You might even lower your hands down onto the ground as you sink your tush down further. One more cycle of breath, inhale. And then exhale, start to rise up, right knee back into your chest lower your right foot onto the ground. Second side, shift the weight of your body into your right foot, left knee comes into your chest. Again, playing with tree pose, if that was the right level for you. If you're moving on, you're gonna stack your left ankle on top of your right knee, press your palms together in the center of your chest, Inhale, lift up through your torso and exhale. Imagine that you're sitting back into a chair. So lower your tush down, pressing your palms together in the center of your chest. Pause. If you want higher intensity, start to lower your torso down. Hook your right elbow with your left foot. You might even lower your hands down to the ground as you sink your tush further down. One more inhale. And then exhale, rise up, left knee into your chest and lower your left foot down. Come back into Tadasana, great job. Let's stand at the front of the mat, back in Tadasana. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back and lower your right knee onto the ground. Untuck your right toes to start and heel toe 
your left foot over towards the left edge of the mat so that you can press your left hand inside your left foot. So now your left foot is outside of your left hand and we're gonna come into lizard pose. And there's several ways to do this with different levels of intensity. For some of us, this level of intensity is spot on, in which case this is where you're gonna stay. Others, you're gonna tuck your right toes. You're gonna lift your right knee up and press your right heel back. And this is where you're gonna stay. Notice how the sensation changes in your left hip. Others still want more intensity, in which case you're gonna lower on to your forearms. And you may even lower your forearms onto your blocks or books if they can't come all the way onto the floor. And that's a good way to bring the floor to you. Because again, the goal of yoga is not to touch your toes. It's the journey. It's figuring it out. It's self-assessment, learning how to make adjustments, learning how to stumble, fall, and rebound. Take another inhale and exhale. We're gonna to start to come out of this. So if your forearms are on the ground, press your palms back into the ground. Everyone lift your right knee up. So tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up and then step your right foot forward and come into a forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up, and exhale, arms down. Second side, inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your left leg back. Lower onto your left knees, untuck your left toes, heel toe your right foot over to the right edge of the mat. So now your right hand is inside of your right foot and we're practicing lizard pose. So again, for some of you, this is plenty. Others are going to tuck your left toes and lift your left knee up and press back through your left heel. And then still others are going to lower your forearms onto the ground or onto blocks. Continue to press back through that left heel. Explore the sensation in your right hip. Couple more cycles of breath. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale and exhale. If your forearms are on the ground, press your palms back into the ground, lift your torso partway up. If your left knee is on the ground, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, and then step your left foot forward, find yourself in forward fold. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, into your feet, rise up, Uttita Hastasana. And exhale, arms down, Tadasana. Moving on, inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward, bend your knees, flatten your palms. Inhale, step your right leg back. Step your left leg to meet it, you're in plank position and either take the vinyasa or meet in downward facing dog. Lower your knees onto the ground. Knees are hip width apart or wider. 
Untuck your toes and shift your hips back onto your heels. Lower your forearms onto the ground and lower your forehead onto the ground. And so here we are again in child's pose. And take a moment to observe if the sensation of being in child's pose this time is different than it was towards the start of the practice. What's changed? If there was a change, why do you think there was a change? Let your curiosity explore this moment. And then start to walk your fingers forward, lengthen your arms, elbows come off the ground, press your palms into the ground, shift your torso forward, and then tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, reach your right leg up and back. Exhale, draw your right knee into your chest. Hug your right knee in closer to your chest as you round your back. Press back through your left heel. And then place your right knee right in back of your right wrist on the ground. Rotate your right shin 90 degrees over to the left. And for some of us, it's not going to come 90 degrees. I'm going to show you what my shin looks like. That's as far as I can go. Start to reach your foot back, lower onto your left knee, untuck your left toes, press your palms into the ground, and lift your torso up. We're going to come into pigeon pose. And for some of you, myself included, if your right hip is off the ground, you're going to take a block and place it underneath your right hip. And then reach your torso and chest up and exhale as you walk your hands forward. Lengthen your right arm out. Angle your, uh, sorry, reach your left arm out. Angle your right forearm in. Lower your forehead onto your right forearm. And release. We're going to be here for about a minute. And as you settle into this pigeon pose, I want to return to this idea of intention for our curiosity. This idea of the Yetzer Hara and Yetzer Hatov. I remember when I was a kid, I once went out for a sushi lunch with my uncle Irving and some cousins. And we were talking about family and I turned to my uncle Irving and I asked him a question about one of my cousins. And it was totally a fishing question. And my uncle Irving turned to me and said, you know what, I have an answer to the question, but I'm not going to share it with you because I just don't trust your intentions. And it was this enormous moment for me of realizing curiosity is good, but for what purpose? If it's for the purpose of Lashon Hara, of gossip, that's misguided curiosity. But if it's for the purpose of compassion, of interest, of care, of love, that's curiosity guided by the Yetzer Hatov, but guided by the good inclinations. So you're in your pigeon pose. Start to walk your left hand back in. Lift up onto both hands. Root them down into the earth. If you have a block underneath your right hip, remove it. 
tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, and then step your right leg back to meet your left leg. You're in plank position and come back into downward facing dog. Second side, inhale, reach your left leg up and back. Exhale, draw your left knee into your chest, really hug it in and around your back. Left knee comes onto the ground and back of your left wrist. Rotate your left shin about 90 degrees in. Start to push your right foot back towards the back of the room, lower onto your right knee, untuck your right toes. If your left hip is on the ground, wonderful. If not, take your block or book, prop it underneath your left hip. Inhale, reach your left heart and chest, reach your whole heart and chest up, and then start to lower down onto your forearms. You can reach your right arm forward and angle your left forearm in 90 degrees towards the right side of the mat and lower your right, your lower your forehead onto your left forearm. And we'll be here for about a minute. Maintain that slow and steady cycle of breath, inhaling through your nose and exhaling out your mouth. Take another couple cycles of breath. And then lift your forehead up, start to walk your hands back in towards your left knee, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, remove the block, and then step your left leg back into a plank position, lower your knees down, and roll over onto your tush. And we have come to the moment for our peak pose. And for me, my hamstrings can be really tight. I like to avoid compression in my lower back. I'm gonna sit up onto a block or a hardcover book. And our peak pose for today is called Upishta Konasana. It's a wide-legged forward fold seated. So extend your legs out into a V position. Start with your fingertips on the ground. Lengthen up through your torso. And here's where I'm offering several modifications. So if you are super flexible, you don't need the block, sit your tush on the floor. So modification number one is to sit up on the block or hardcover book. Then start to walk your fingertips forward and see, explore your limitation. Flatten your hands into the ground. For me, lowering my torso, probably about 15 degrees, that's it. That's where I stop. Others can walk forward more. They can lower their forearms onto the ground. So that's a way you can deepen the intensity. You could play around with grabbing onto your big toes and pulling them in towards you. If this is too challenging, experiment with having a bend in your knees. You can still feel that sensation in your hips.
What I love about the practice of yoga and what I try to integrate into my Jewish practice is this experimentation, this curiosity, this flexibility. One of the greatest things I've been told about yoga is that the aim is not to get you into the pose, it's to make the pose work for you. To me, that's an enormous game changer. And what would our spiritual life look like if that was our orientation? Take Shabbat as an example. The goal of Shabbat is not to totally adhere to every single regulation. The regulations are not the goal. It's the experience of Shabbat. The regulations are there to help guide you. They may work for you, they may not. How can we be curious about this idea of Shabbat, the idea of a Sabbath, in a way that helps us glean something from rest, from reflection, from the value of praise and gratitude Take another couple cycles of breath. And then start to walk your hands back in, lift your torso up. And then bring your legs together. If you're sitting up on a block or a book, you can come off of it. Let's take one seated forward fold. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, holding forward. Lower your hands onto your feet or your ankles or your shins. And again, the goal is not to touch the toes. The goal is to glean the benefits of breathing, of exploring, of testing limitations, learning to back off, centering the mind. Inhale, lift your torso up, bend your knees, extend your arms out in front of you, just like we started, lower down onto your back. Arms come alongside your torso, lengthen your right leg forward, lengthen your left leg forward, allow your ankles to roll open, palms face up, and release into Shavasana, into the final resting pose. Let your eyes close. Let your shoulders melt into the ground. Let your spine sink into the earth and travel that sensation from your upper back to your middle back, lower back. Let your thighs and calves sink into the earth and release, release your attachments.
Start to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Just awakening your body once more. Draw your knees into your chest and pause. And start to shift forward and back and forward and back, building up momentum until you glide or push yourself up into a seated position, returning to Sukhasana. Right shin stacked in front of your left shin, hands on top of your knees, palms facing up. And centering your mind back on this idea, this virtue of curiosity. And curiosity for the sake of Hitlam Dut, of transformative learning. When I was in college, my Hillel rabbi was an amazing woman named Rabbi Lisa Goldstein, and she went on to become the executive director of the Institute for Jewish Spirituality. And Rabbi Goldstein said about these ideas of curiosity and hitlam dut, there is a great deal we cannot control in our world, and yet we can still act. We can develop our capacity to see things with openness and curiosity for hitlam dut, for transformative learning. We can bring compassion to our own experience and connect with others' experiences as well. We can discern what communal and political arenas we can step into and what steps we can take. Because this moment has never existed before and there is so much to do. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. And there is a famous Jewish scientist, I'm blanking on his name, I apologize, who reflected that the reason he became a scientist was that as he got home from school each day, while most mothers would say, did you have a good day? What did you learn? Tell me one thing you learned. His mother would say, tell me a question you asked. So I want us to close our practice giving each of you space to land on a question. What is a curiosity you want to explore in 2021? Become a social scientist, a political scientist, a physical scientist, and seal that curiosity in and lift your chin up. Namaste, Shabbat Shalom.